March 1st, 1896. Yeah, Emperor Menelik II and Empress Taitu, uh, two people who were very integral, of course, to the battle, to the uh, victory of the battle. But actually what's really important about the Battle of Adwa you have to understand is that people from all over Ethiopia came together despite differences, despite being able to not being able to speak the same language, despite being a king, despite being a peasant, despite being a farmer, they're united in defending their country. So, and uh, for many of you, maybe this is the first time you've heard of this battle, and this is actually a very neglected part of history, but it's for this, it's for this, it's for this victory and the victories leading up to this that actually changed the course of history for us to even be here to where we are today. So here we are celebrating it, and I actually, when I got to go to, sorry, when I got to go to Ethiopia myself, this is a photo I got to take of partly of where the Battle of Ottawa took place. Um, so yeah, thank you again for being here with me on this special week. And as you go through on this Thursday, make sure to thank your fellow Ethiopians or just Ethiopia in general. So coffee, coffee, what we are here for today. So what's coffee? So coffee originates in Ethiopia in case you don't know. So uh, the story goes that it goes back to 9th century uh, CE. There was a goat herder uh, named Kaldi who, uh, would, who had goats and his goats all of a sudden were just starting to... Uh, Start lab, they were just jumping up and making all these noise and he wasn't sure what was going on. And so when he went to go check the red berries that they'd eaten, um, he was unsure like, you know, what, what caused this. So when he took it to a monk to, to ask him about, you know, what are these berries, the monk despised of them and he threw them into the fire. So when he threw them into the fire, the aroma from the coffee beans came and they were shocked by this. And so from this, the Ethiopian monks especially, at the time, used coffee to help them with their prayer and staying up. Um, and so this is really the, the uh, origin of, of coffee. And uh, as you may or may not know, coffee is an agroforestry crop um, and is grown in shade systems uh, in tropical climates. It's actually one of the most valuable and a widely traded tropical uh, agricultural products. Uh, 120 million, 125 million people actually depend on coffee for their livelihoods. And currently there are 12.5 million uh, co small coffee farmers uh, worldwide. But actually currently um, coffee farmers are actually facing challenges with being able to see the, their profits uh, because of the amount of actors that the, from, from when they cultivate their seeds and they sell their seeds to when it reaches the consumer. Most coffee farmers are very unsure of what their uh, seeds end up selling for. So. Unfortunately, coffee farmers are experiencing a lot of hardships, but I think through creating awareness like this and just understanding and creating coffee ceremonies like this where we, it's not just about the taste of coffee, but you start to create experiences around, around food, then you start to create proper food systems and you start to create markets for all this. So for this one, I'd like to have my father help me with this one, uh, guest speaker, but I'll, I will begin um, just to say that so Ethiopian coffee is, well, coffee in general is known as Buna and Boon in Tigrinya. Uh, and so it's really drinking at any time of the day in Ethiopia uh, as a way to take a break, as a way to just socialize, as a way to start your day. It's honestly such a versatile experience that we do. Um, and yeah, like as you can see here, we do it during gatherings. It usually comes after food um, and you know, just picks up our energy after a good meal. And so what makes our coffee ceremony different is coffee is not just drank once, which I hope when you guys did not just drink once. <laughs> but actually there are three rounds of Ethiopian coffee. The first one called uh, Abu, the second one called Tona, and the third one called, the third round called Beraka. Um, as you saw, and as, as I mentioned, the coffee is first roasted, uh, grinded, put in a jebana to boil for, with water. After it's done boiling, we let it sit so the coffee grinds, uh, so the coffee grinds can settle to the bottom, and we're left with just a rich coffee to pour into our. Uh, they're called sinis, the little cups. Um, and so, uh, notably, uh, maybe I should have said this before, but if you're going to continue to drink coffee, uh, a delicious coffee uh, with a dark black color, we call it yedoro ayin, and so that means uh, it's like a chicken's eye. Um, so that's usually to, to uh, signify that it's a that it's, you know, it's a really good uh, coffee. But 
Also, usually when you drink coffee, and what you're supposed to say to someone who's making you coffee, usually when, of course, you like the coffee, uh, you say konjo bunna. Uh, konjo means so many different things, but great bunna, you know, great, good, you know, amazing. It means it's a very versatile word. So, um, and as you can see, usually women are in charge of the whole ceremony, but in 2023, things are changing. <laughs> And a lot of my, I, I have men in my family, no names, uh, who I see making coffee all the time. I think it's a great thing. You know, it takes the pressure off uh, of, of women just to have that expectation that we eat. It's time to, it's time for you guys to work. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to bring my father, Tedros Theodore Mamo, uh, to make a quick speech about Ethiopian coffee, Ethiopian coffee ceremony. you'll think very well, okay? Uh, so, well, to be honest with you, most of the things he's saying, he knows better than me. I'm not being facetious, okay? It's true. Uh, so, there's not much I can, I can elaborate be, uh, as far as the coffee, but I want to take this uh, uh, this moment and take a little shameless plug about this guy, okay? So, uh, I, I want you to know where the passion uh, comes from. So, when he finished high school. So, the Ethiopian background, they know. I never took him back home, okay? Never went back home. And I did not make that concerted effort, like immigrant family, to Ethiopianize him so much, or transfer the luggage, I did transfer the culture and all that. I did not make so much effort. Uh, their grandma always blamed me, or my mother-in-law said, okay? You don't care, you just want me to be American, <laughs> that kind of stuff, but uh, apparently, 2018, when he, I'm sorry, uh, 19, when he finished high school, we gathered together with my friends and they gave him a gift of like $4,000, okay? And he said, Daddy, I'm gone. Where? I'm going to Ethiopia. I'm going to see my ancestors, my aunt. I don't blame you. You couldn't take me because I understand you're raising three boys. Uh, Mom is stay home, so we, you, you, I can understand your limitation. So I'm going to go see. I said, what? Would you by yourself? Yes, I'm going. <laughs> Wait in. My aunt is there. My uncle is there. So, grandma said, no way. I said, go. Oh, okay. I'm more like a free range family type. <laughs> so, but he finally, after 27 years, okay, grandma insisted, special, you cannot go by yourself. So, he took his mom after 27 years. That was 18, so he came back. Uh, you know, he traveled with him then a short period of time, but he traveled Lali Bella, Axum, all the Muslims. So he came back. And then since agroecology, then, so the end, he barely speak any word, except the one we say when, when we get upset. He <laughs> understands a little bit, okay? <laughs> but uh, coming back, he hired a tutor from Ethiopia, and he learned on his own through, through Zoom, learned the language so the first time, the second time, he's been there four times now. So the last time he went there, we were at the airport and I talked to him, Dad, no problem, I can come to the kids now, okay? <laughs> because I, I, I have a So what I'm trying to tell you is, this passion, I don't know where it come from, the, the fact that, the, how much the interest he, he has about back home, about Africa and, and all that. So a good friend of mine said, uh, I'm, I'm fairly involved with, the, with, the, with, the, with the my community. So he said, you know, Teddy, the old saying, the kids, does not listen what you say, they follow what you do. So apparently he picked up, uh, you know, can I take a credit from me? I, I'm very involved with the community, so he, he watched me, you know, he go, he comes with my, with my friends, you know, I love the social life, he understands. So, so this is, a, to conclude, this is a, 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 a labor of love. That was, he put this thing, it's not like to show you, I took a coffee, but he just, he just, this is really what, what he is. Yeah, this is, this is passion, so you can see through that. And I'm going to conclude by saying, yes, a uh, little bit what I came about here, the coffee ceremony is this. So coffee is it's a lifestyle in Ethiopia. So what happened is, uh, commonly in Africa, okay, the man goes to work, primarily, and the, you know, the housewife stays home. So, every minute, so coffee, you have the ceremony, you have learned the snack, you try that, right? So, 
when the husband goes home, camp is made, the neighbor, they invite each other, okay? This is the only form of entertainment. This is your Netflix, this is your <laughs> friends, it's a lifestyle. So the coffee has a, cer it's a ceremony, it's a get together. It takes like an hour process. Okay, we're we'll going over doing that, let's go cook before the husband comes, they go. And then in the afternoon, it's a turn for another neighbor, they invite you. So in Ethiopia, coffee is, it's a social life, it's, it's a lifestyle. So that's what we're trying to show kids here. So, let's get it. And the, the final thing to, to say, thank you so much for hosting us in a beautiful school of yours, beautiful place. We already uh, submitted our request for the whole for the wedding. <laughs> but in any case, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. This is a beautiful place. We had an amazing time, amazing experience. I hope you did it. Also. Thank you so much. Okay? Can't help it. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, I guess couldn't be here. The whole Center for Agroecology. The whole Cassie and EBS. That's how we wrap up an event at the Hay Barn, y'all. Thank you all for tuning into this session. You know, Mattias, thank you everybody for helping. Welcome to our Ethiopian coffee ceremony. And we out. Yo, Mattias, we'll see you soon.